Welcome to another fascinating conversation we're going to have with John Mariani about something gastronomical, I think. <laughs> John. Mm -hmm. uh, John, what I love about your virtual gourmet newsletter, free, by the way, at johnmariani.com. Everybody should subscribe. Uh, what I love about it is it's a it's a wonderful mix of food and travel and, of course, your uh, novels. You, you post your uh, novels sequentially online. But in terms of travel, Paris is, we like to think, uh, those of us who have not been there yet, we like to think that Paris is the quintessential uh, place for fine dining. On the other hand... The reason I haven't been there is because it probably costs an arm and a leg. Is that true? Has has anything changed? Yes, mightily. Um, the idea that Paris is extremely expensive to dine out in, how's that for dangling prepositions, um, is really a phenomenon of the last mm, 30 years. Because after the war, if you and I, John and Art, got on a, a student flight on a 707, Boeing 707, charter flight, and we got to Paris, um, and the dollar was so strong, you could eat at a nice French restaurant for somewhere in the neighborhood of 3 to $5. Wow. And, and I did it, and I went all over France and, and Europe, and those, because the dollar was so strong. Um, as things got better, as the economies over there improved, of course, uh, and the way would, well, they, they converted to the euro, remember, they used to have the francs. So, uh, and Italy had its lira and the German marks. And so forth. so um, they converted to the euro and European Union was doing very, very well. And because of more tourism and more tourism and more tourism, there were many, many restaurants that aimed for the heights, got the three Michelin stars, and could charge pretty much anything they wanted to. Um, now, they would argue uh, two things. First of all, our high-end high, high -end dining rooms do not make much money. We make much more money from the other two restaurants that are lesser priced. The reason they are so expensive is our real estate, and this is true almost any place, the quality of our ingredients, which is very, very expensive, the fact that we have to pay our employees uh, who do not get tipped, we pay them outright a salary, um, and so many other factors uh, of, of table service and candelabra and gilded sconces, and that's what made it all very, very expensive. Is that still true today? Yes, at that level, you could spend 80 euros, which is now about $84, for an appetizer at a place like Arpege, which has three Oh, my stores. God. You could pay one hundred twenty dollars for lobster, just a lobster. Jeez. Exquisite, yeah, it will be terrific, and the surroundings and the service and everything is going to be superb. But um, that's what it's going to cost. Now, now the dollar is almost at parity. Even five or six years ago, it was a dollar twenty to the euro. So that's expensive, even at the lower levels. Now, so we're at parity. One dollar buys you one euro, just about. That's great. <clears throat> the French themselves, the Parisians, do not go to those restaurants with anything vaguely resembling regularity or maybe never once in their lives. Well, how do they eat? They eat at their neighborhood bistros and brasseries. Uh, brasseries used to be Alsatian beer halls and bistros uh, used to be little family-owned uh, restaurants, small restaurants. That has kind of blurred, but Ever since before the war, when Hemingway and Fitzgerald used to go to France and they were really flush with American dollars, even back then, these things cost next to nothing. You know? uh, so that by the 1950s, um, you could go there, as I said, you could eat, eat a really, really good restaurant for $10 with wine. <clears throat> and service is always included. Okay, so to make it a long story short, if we were, the three of us were to go over now to Paris, and we just didn't intend to eat at those three-star restaurants <clears throat> or even the two-star restaurants, which can <clears throat> be somewhat expensive, maybe cost you, I don't know, $120 a person for a full meal, which is what you find in certainly New York or Los Angeles. 
excuse me. But if you go to the bistros, if you go to the brasseries, where the real people eat, or as much as Parisians are real people, where the people eat, uh, and they eat pâté de campagne, they eat soup à l'agneau, they eat marvelous sausages, and they eat Strasbourg um, Alsatian food, and they have creme caramel at the end, and they have souffles of, of cheese and chocolate souffles and so forth. These are the places that cost no more than, and in many cases less than, the average restaurant of that type in the United States. To wit, most of them offer a set price menu for, you could have a three course menu, sometimes with a glass of wine, tax and service included, okay, for between 30 and $50. Oh my Lord, wow. You go up to 60 or 70, you can you can buy the restaurant. <clears throat> because this is the way that Parisians eat out once, twice, three times a week. This is where they have their celebrations for their family. They want a great roast chicken. They love the seafood. They love the coquillage and the, a, a rafter of, of oysters that they have at La Rotonde of Montparnasse. And they go to places for special dishes like au pied de cochon, which means pig's foot, where that's what they serve, this crispy, wonderful pig's foot, which you can probably get for about Nineteen twenty-three dollars, something like that. Um, it's quite remarkable, and I found it uh, generally true. Italy is, Italy is even cheaper at that level, where a plate of pasta still costs twelve to fourteen dollars. Um, so, for anybody who says, "Oh, I can't afford, can't afford that," London, you may not be able to afford. London is very, very expensive, despite <laughs> uh, London. Even the, even the Smaller restaurants, the lower level restaurants are still very expensive unless you go to a pub, but the food's getting better. Pub. So I heartily recommend that if you have not been to France, John, and Art, you have? Yeah, I, I've been there. And I, I just as a, a note, uh, you've done a great service for our audience because uh, now I, I, I was in France uh, actually during the uh, summer that uh, uh, Armstrong won his first Tour de France. Uh, in fact, we were uh, right in the middle of it at the very end. Uh, wasn't even quite sure that was happening there. But the food in France was absolutely delicious. I've been to France a couple of times, but Paris just that once. And I can't say that we ever had a bad meal um, uh, in France. And I will also say for my limited uh, world traveling in Australia, where I was uh, stationed for about a, a year or so, uh, all these small restaurants are really, really, really good. Couldn't say it of London. Uh, it was always a mixed bag. But France, fabulous food uh, at the uh, the uh, bistros, the brasseries, if I pronounce that correctly, that you mentioned. And John Coleman recommended highly. You'll, you'll love it. It's a great city. One more thing I should say that a lot of people insecure Americans are uh, terrified that the French will look down their noses at that French Gaulic snobism. Mm. Um, it's, it, it was once true because we didn't speak any French and they were frustrated with, with us who came and wanted to order le hamburger or the steak with French fries. Uh, that's so long gone. Um, I have not been in a, in a restaurant where they're not very welcoming. Oh, mm. bonsoir, bonjour, bonjour, madame. Oh, they're, they're, uh, they are they want because they want to make money. They want to make business. Right. Even the three star restaurants, which used to be um, haughty <laughs> because they could afford to be and because they had a billionaire, millionaire clientele, not any longer. They are all extremely happy. And especially, you know, COVID chastened a whole lot of human beings that maybe I shouldn't be the way I used to be because I'd rather make some money and have people come through the door than uh, than not. Good, good advice. Love that perspective. Thank you. I've got to book my flight to Paris now. Let's go. Allons-y. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm ready. I got the passport. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.